Good evening. We arrived at our Airbnb at about 1.30 and we set our alarm for four o'clock. Next thing you know, it is six o'clock at night. So we obviously needed the sleep, but we kind of feel like getting a little movement in and exploring a little bit. So the plan is to walk down to Kite Beach and get a nice view of the Gorge Al Arab. Despite the fact that the sun is going down, it is still about 34 degrees. So let's see how this goes, because apparently from here, Kite Beach is about a 40 minute walk. just got back to our Airbnb after an amazing evening at Kite Beach. The plan was basically to walk down, which took about 35 minutes, I'd say, and to have a picnic on the beach, which is exactly what we did. And it was just amazing because we got a beautiful view of the Burj Al Arab while we were there. Like you're going to hear Burj a lot, so you've got the Burj Khalifa, which is like over a kilometre tall and is the world's tallest building. And then you have the Burj Al Arab, which is the world's only seven star hotel, I think it was. Yeah, so after eating, we went mm. into the water, which was like a lukewarm hot tub. It it's... was perfect. It was like every ideal swimming pool that you could ever hope to have, but it had like actual waves. In your opinion, I could have actually done with it being a little cooler and more refreshing, to be honest with you, but obviously I'm not complaining. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And to be flanked by the Burj Khalifa on one side and then the Burj Al Arab on the other side, it was just absolutely incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I think the great thing was is that they got it like fully set up as like an entertainment complex mm -hmm. as well. So you have all sorts of different food stands and then we kind of took a little walk along and we saw a bunch of people playing beach volleyball which made us both exceptionally jealous because we'd love to have joined in others were playing pickleball i think there was like a little go-kart track as well on the beach which was nuts so it was like a trampolining area for kids there were people biking along the boardwalk walking running like you could just lead such an active lifestyle here either very early in the morning or like probably seven o'clock at night and onwards. It is worth noting that we have come at what people would probably describe as the worst time of the year because it is hot. Mm -hmm. We walked to the beach, we came out sweating. We walked back from the beach, we came out sweating more. And this is considering that we arrived at the beach by sunset. Yeah. And then we come back in the dark. So, but keep in mind, it wasn't unbearable. Like if we no. hadn't been able to walk, we would have taken an Uber. Mm -hmm. But it was a hot, like thirty-five minute walk. Yeah, exactly. So that's just something to bear in mind. But honestly, whenever certainly I've gone on city breaks and things like that, then I've kind of taken a bit of an internal assessment of like whether the city is just really, really good for a visitor or whether it's like a really livable city, like what could I imagine myself living here? And I have to say, like even based on the, what, 12 hours that we've spent here now, I can firmly say that Dubai falls very much under the livable category. Like mm -hmm. we were even talking about like how nice it would be to be kind of around the Kai Beach area and all of that kind of stuff, so. And obviously we've only seen one area. Yeah. But it's the weather, the walkability, the, 
beach and water access, the active lifestyle, yeah. how safe it is, whether it's at night or during the day. How well connected everything is. Like basically you have more or less every amenity that you could possibly want as somebody that's coming from more or less anywhere in the world. There's oh. a big expat community here. Exactly. So obviously like we do completely accept that all of this has only really come around the last sort of 10, 15 years. So mm -hmm. it's not like an all around cultural experience that maybe we've yeah. had in previous countries, but certainly it's very nice here. Yeah. Can't say any further than that. And that's just our initial impression. We cannot wait to explore more tomorrow. Good morning. Good morning. From Dubai, it is an absolute scorcher out. I just checked Aki weather and it says it's 34, but real feel 43. So I hope that should give you an indicator of what we're feeling right now. Come on, it is well hot. Might be too hot. Might be. Oh. The good thing though is that we are going to Dubai Mall, so we'll be inside most of the day with some air conditioning. And Dubai Mall is only like two metro stops away from where we're staying. But the nice thing about Dubai Mall is that we'll also be able to see the Burj Khalifa from there, which is the world's tallest building, and go to the fountain show. So there's a lot for us to do in that area. Let's crack on. Let's go to the mall today. This might be the most expensive coffee I've ever had, but let's give it a go. It's probably the best coffee I've ever had as well. Fair play. Good, good job, Arabica, you've done well. ended up finding was right by the fountains and we actually ended up getting pretty well splashed to the point where I feel like I've probably just gone through Niagara again. Kind of like Hornblower. Exactly. But we're in Dubai. Kind of nuts. Let's carry on.
as tempting as the food court was, it was just too expensive because the cheapest thing in there we could have bought was about 60 dirham total. And so we came to Grandiose Supermarket, which is also inside the mall, and we got a halloumi sandwich, some pita, some avocado hummus, a pomegranate juice and water, all for 40 dirham which is about 1450 Canadian. So we saved 20 dirham by choosing the supermarket instead of the food court. didn't just buy a tripod today as you can see or not see maybe this shirt is getting very stained and Nick's white shirt is also so we were on the hunt for some linens and we went into H&M and in the kids section I found a boys blue linen shirt that I fit into on sale also Nick's swimming trunks are super stained from the mud in the Dead Sea so while we're at H&M he also found some new swimming trunks that were on sale. So in total for the linen shirt for me and the swimming trunks for Nick, we spent about 90 dirham, which is about $36 Canadian. Obviously these are purchases that were kind of necessary because we needed to replace things. So we can't feel too badly about them. We just got back from Dubai Mall and we spent six and a half hours there today. I have never seen anything like it. This place is absolutely ginormous. They have everything from high-end stores like Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Hermes, to also just normal high street retailers like H&M, Mango, Nike, and things like that. They have stores from everywhere around the world, whether it be Canada, US, Europe, like they had a Tim Hortons, they have WH Smith, and even some stores that are discontinued, like Debitums and River Island. How? And the food court is more or less the same. It does have a grand range of all sorts of cuisine. It is mostly fast food, which does make it a little bit cheaper. Healthier options are a little bit harder to find though, so that's just a little bit something to bear in mind. But there are also both local and global supermarkets available in case you do want to go for something which is a bit more of a healthy option, or you just want to couple something together yourself. Outside of those, which you would regularly see in malls though, then there are some crazy things that you would not see otherwise. Some incredible sculptures, ridiculously oversized fountains. They even have an ice rink in there just because seemingly, but I think the real jewel in the crown really was the aquarium. Like, is there really anything more peaceful in a stressful shopping day than just seeing fish go by? I, I don't even know. The mall is also super beautifully decorated and they even have two different kind of more ethnic-y sections. There is a section that is decorated like a souk and then a section that is decorated like Chinatown. Oh, that reminds me. They also have a dinosaur fossil in that mm. souk area as well, just in case you want other superfluous things that have no right to be in a mall. Basically, you can get anything you want there from clothing to technology. Everything you could possibly want, <laughs> you can find it in there pretty easily. And that's another really neat thing. Like, because it is so massive, it is very often that you will find yourself getting lost. I think we've probably got lost about eight times today, mm -hmm. at least. But the good news is around pretty much every corner is an information board, which is interactive. You type in where you want to go. And not only does it show you where, but it also tells you how to get there from that information point with detailed instructions. So good. Never had an experience like that before. It was a great way to spend the day in an air conditioning to boot. Exactly. Very, very good day indeed. We're going to spend the rest of our day just relaxing and we'll be back up and at it tomorrow. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.